Right Saxo fans, episode 45, picking up right where we left off from the last one. So I've got my new Y piece now, uh, that, that all fits. Trim regulators on there, as I said before, one to the welder and then one to the purge line. So I've mocked up a little bit of a, sort of a, yeah, it's, it's a bit of an average uh, back purging setup to be honest, but talking with a few other sort of welder mates, if you want to call them that, um, they said just, just keep it simple. So. All I've actually got in the end there is um, it's actually just a cap from a, um, a spray bottle that I've put a, a fitting into uh, and then just sealed it with some aluminium tape. And then on this end as well, aluminium tape, just with some breather holes in to allow the argon to come out. So yeah, kept it nice and simple. Obviously I can't really use that if I'm welding quite close to it, but given that I'm gonna be welding sort of over here and over here, that should be absolutely fine. Any closer, I think I'll probably start melting it, but I think that'll be absolutely fine for this. Um, so I'm just going to do a little practice weld because I haven't welded for about three or four days. So I just want to get my eye back in uh, and then we'll get on with welding that first pipe and all the other ones that you saw in the last episode. So let me get set up and let's, let's get going. Right guys, that's the first joint done. Um, I think, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that to be honest. Fairly happy with uh, yeah, the smoothness and the colours and yeah, lack of oxidation, which is great. So yeah, I'm just gonna move on through the others now and get them all done. It's a bit awkward because of the shape of it, but hopefully these ones here might be a little bit easier. So um, yeah, anyway, we'll crack on with them and I'll show you the finished article. Right, that's that one all welded up then. Pretty straightforward in the end. Yeah, my runs aren't the smoothest, but I think that's just gonna come from practice. But I'm happy with um, like penetration and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think they're okay. As long as they don't leak. I'll do a leak check on it anyway. Get a smoke machine on it and see if there's any um, any pinholes, but should be all right now. So um, I need to weld the rest of them up. So uh, I think I've got uh, one, two, three joins there. That just is a little extension, and I think that's it. So I'll get them done, I won't show you that, and uh, yeah, we'll offer these up to the car to make sure nothing's moved around too much. Well, as I say, fans, that's all the welding on the boost pipes done. Well, to weld them together anyway, there's a couple of other things I need to do to those, which we'll get to those in a minute. Um, but the next thing I wanted to do is talk about the, uh, the bead rolling on the end. Now, I said in my last episode I was gonna run essentially a cold and sort of slightly lumpy weld around the top to replicate a, a rolled bead. But actually, I've bought a bit of kit to do that for me instead. I think that's a better option, taking some advice from somebody who said don't do that. <laughs> um, so anyway, what I'm looking to replicate is what I've got here on this bit of aluminium pipe. This is one that I just bought sort of off the shelf, which was yeah too, too long for what I needed. Essentially, the one I've got here was the one I needed. So you can see, anyway. Um, yeah, that's the bead I'm looking to replicate and that's what this tool does. Fairly cheap bit of kit, £75 from Amazon. It's going to have fairly limited uses obviously, but at least it will allow, allow me to do my own my own stuff. But I have give it a quick test run and you can see I've got a, quite a nice bead around there. So it does work. Uh, sort of, it works like one of those sort of tube cutters where you sort of put it on, tighten it, spin it around, push it a bit more, spin it around some more. It's kind of sort of that sort of process. So I'll show you that now anyway. So this one, this one on the end is done, so we'll do that one, shall we? So let me show you how that works, and then we'll do all the other ones. Uh, yeah, and then we'll do the, the other bits of welding on them.
Right, all boost pipes successfully bead rolled on all the ends, so they're sorted, they can stay out of the way for now. I've just loosely fitted this one into place because the next step, other than doing the exhaust, which I'll get to at some point in my life, is to put the comb filter in. Now I bought a brand new one, uh, it's got a three inch rubber outlet, so just on a simple Jubilee. And I'm thinking the best place to put this, ideally obviously away from all the hot stuff, it's probably going to be, yeah, somewhere loosely around there. Um, maybe sort of pointing up if I can or whatever, somewhere convenient like that. So obviously it's got to come from there, sort of sneak up, bring it up a little bit underneath this pipe and over there somewhere. So I bought a couple of bits. Uh, so the first thing is to probably just do a little straight section so I can put a joiner on because I bought a little three inch piece to go on there. And then, um, then I've got like a little 45 essentially to come up. So I'll make the, the piece with a 45 on first and then we'll see how many bends and things I've got to put in. So what I've bought is just some straight three inch and then just a small amount of little pie cuts just to give it a couple of little tweaks. A bit like what I did here really. So yeah, we'll do that. Um, so let's go and cut the straight piece. We'll weld on or tack on the, the 45 and then see where we're going to be. Right, just mocking up a little bit, just using a bit of tape really to hold things in place. But you can see, so you've got the joiner on there. There's a pie cut just to turn it ever so slightly through the 45 degrees and then two more pie cuts. And essentially, if I put this in, this is not the right size pipe, but it's just making life easier. Basically going to be like that. I think that's where we're going to be. So I'm going to put some tacks on the corner and then work out the length of that and then I might just kick the filter up a little bit at the end. Right, that's that little elbow in. I've already sort of mocked up the next one and it's going to go somewhere like that. Plenty of clearance under there. Jobs are good and going to get that one tacked on. That's that one tacked on then, nice and easy. Final piece of the puzzle, just to pop the filter on. And that's going to be, I think, somewhere roughly about there so sort of in line with the height of the master cylinder maybe a fraction lower and just sort of in its own nice clear space yeah i think that'll work well so let me go and tack it all up for the final time and i'll show you the whole deal jobs are good eh? there we go then she's all in albeit obviously only tacked but you can see the sort of height of it Fairly confident that's going to fit under the bonnet. Job is done. So I'll obviously go and weld that up completely, then think about support bracket because at the moment, obviously, it's all loose on the rubber down there, but it is fairly floppy. So yeah, I'll have a little think about that. Um, could just uh, maybe use the excess thread off the top of the mount and have just like a little very skinny nut on it or something, that might work. Yeah, just want to keep it simple really. Or I've got a little stud there that I could put a little bracket onto perhaps. Yeah, plenty of plenty of options. But yeah, for all intensive purposes that's done. So I'll get that welded and show you when it's done. Um, yeah, good please with that. Right, next thing then is um, breathers. Well, I know I just mentioned we're going to do something with the breathers, but actually we're going to pause that. And that's for one reason. 
essentially the catch tank that I bought, catch can, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is it here. It's a um, twin AN10 inlet to, to match the two AN10s that I've got coming off the cam covers just there. Um, yes, it's just too big. I just don't really know how I'm going to mount that. It's just, it's, it's all in the wrong orientation as well. The sort of place where I, I was thinking I'd really wanted it to be like that, which means the filter on the end would be in the wrong place and the drain is on the end. And yeah, it's just, it's just not going to work. So, uh, I mean, it's fairly cheap, so I can just send this one back. So it's nice and easy. But so what I, I've got an idea of what I am going to do though, and I'm probably going to do like a little mini episode on that one. Um, so we'll come back to that. So just pause the breathers for now. Uh, I have welded up the intake pipe here. That's all, it's all just sort of loosely just placed on the car for now. Um, so I need to make the bracket for that so it can't wiggle around too much. Uh, but the next thing we're actually going to do is get the blow-off valve mounted. This is a Forge Motorsport blow-off valve. It's a uh, twin piston design. Uh, it's got 25mm inlet here. And that's going to probably go on the back of the intake pipe here quite close to the throttle in a little bit of free space um, and obviously the route for the vac pipe off the top to there is, is not too long so fairly happy with the amount of space that i've got the eagle-eyed among you will notice the uh, gear shift uh, the clutch shift mechanism that i've got in place now i mentioned in my episode that that would randomly appear halfway through this episode and there it is, so that's now in place, and obviously all my clearances are okay with all the pipes, which is one thing I was worried about. Uh, anyway, so I need to weld on a 25 mil opposing stub onto the back of that pipe there, so we'll get that done. We'll make up the little mount, and then we'll see um, what we've got left to do. Just before we go and weld that, the pipe stuff up, I just wanted to very quickly explain why I chose this particular blow-off valve from Forge. Um, it was all around the sound, essentially. Um, I prefer the sort of, um, what do you call it, compressor stall noise. That that's like, I love that noise. I think it sounds brilliant. However, you know, very bad for your turbo, and I'm quite keen not to destroy a 1,200 quid turbo. So um, out of all of the blow-off valves out there, this was sort of the most sort of least intrusive, if you like. Um, you know, the sound is, is nice, but not horrendous, not too loud. Um, yeah, so hopefully this one will sound the best and, yeah, not, you know, sort of Mackie D's on a Friday night type sort of thing. So hopefully that, that'll that be good. And also I bought all the different springs for it so you can change them based on what sort of boost pressure you want them to release at and or what um, yeah what boost levels you're running and all that sort of stuff. So this should hopefully be uh, the best compromise, I think. So, and, and not too bad in terms of cost. Pretty simple to follow what was going on there, I think. Put a nice uh, bead rolled end on the end of that. And then I have filed, if I can get this to the right angle, a little bit of a curve into that. So that on my boost pipe, this is not the actual pipe, but another bit. I'll weld that on there. Obviously it's gonna sit nicely on the pipe. So I'll go and get the boost pipe. And then we'll um, drill a hole in it and weld that little badger on.
There we go then. Little stub, welded on, and it matches essentially the size of the dump valve. So, sorry, I keep saying dump valve, blow off valve. That'll obviously go on there, joined by a little bit of pipe. I did have a little bit of pipe, but it's just an off cut for something else, but it's too, it's too big, too loose, but I've ordered a bit that'll be obviously a lot shorter and the right diameter, but basically it's going to look something like that, but not quite as long. And obviously dropped onto the engine. So I'll let that cool down properly because it is still a bit toasty. Um, in the engine bay, in preparation for this, I have looped in the vac hose off the inlet manifold. So if you remember, I put five fittings in here for various bits and bobs. Obviously I'm gonna need one for fuel pressure regulator, which is already plumbed in, one for blow off valve. I'm going to need one for wastegate, one for dump valve, and then potentially a spare one, maybe ECU or something like that. And obviously you can always tee these as well. So I feel like five is enough, but anyway, that's in and obviously ready to be cut and fitted to the blow off valve when it's in place and my bit of pipe arrives. But yeah, that's basically done. So on to the next thing. Right, dump valve all done. The last thing we're gonna do on this video is sort out some heat protection for the boost pipe that comes out the bottom of the turbo here and runs runs along here. Now uh, that's gonna be in really, really pro close proximity to the, the exhaust. So I wanna provide some heat protection for it. So this is the pipe that we're gonna wrap essentially. I bought some, um, heat tape from Funk Motorsport. Now I don't know if this stuff is like far superior to other stuff that you can buy online that's cheaper, but this little roll here was was 40 quid or near enough 40 quid. Um, so yeah, I don't know whether like the Amazon stuff is just rubbish or it's just miles cheaper or Funk are taking the mickey with the pricing, I don't know. But anyway, I'm gonna use it for this bit. Um, and then I, I, I was tempted to do all the other pipes um, in this as well. But with the price of it from front, probably not. So I might use maybe some of the cheaper stuff where it's less critical, but let's get this wrapped up. There we go, pretty straightforward and easy job then. That's in, jobs are good. And I've just got that resting on here just to show you for now, but essentially the turbos, the turbo exit exhaust, it's got to go down there. So uh, yeah, that's basically it for this video. In the next one, we're going to be talking catch tank. I think we've got everything we need to do that. So yeah, until next time, see you then.